Teaching subtraction concepts should be through interpreting and applying realistic concepts using known facts to derive the necessary information to solve new problems. Teachers need to provide experiences that build on students' prior understandings and scaffold opportunities for them to reach their potential development. So let's put things in context. Let's just not talk about abstract numbers, but uh, relate all our different examples to students' experience. We can look at something like wheeling and dealing. The Jack bought a pair of roller blades at a garage sale for $30 and sold them to his cousin the next day for $40. That night he thought about the fun he could have had with the roller blades and wished he hadn't sold them. So the next day he bought them back from his cousin for $50. While rollerblading that night, he had a bad fall and decided to sell them again. He took them to the local recycling shop, where the manager paid him $60. Well, it's all a bit confusing, isn't it? Then he paid 30 he sold them for 40 and then he bought them back for 50 and then he sold them for 60 Did Jack make money, lose money, or break even? Have you worked it out? Well, what do you know? He actually made $20. How do we work that out? Well, let's look at uh, how much money he paid out. He paid out 30 originally, and then he paid 50 to buy them back from his cousin, so he paid out 80 He took in 100 He sold them to his cousin for 40 and then later on sold them to the recycling shop manager for 60 So we're looking at uh, a difference between $100 that he took in and $80 that he paid out, which gives us a profit of $20. Right, let's try to incorporate real-life examples wherever possible and some problem-solving strategies, getting students to think, not just mindlessly reproducing uh, learned procedures. Subtraction means to take away from a number, find the difference between two numbers or the complement of a number. Our symbol looks a bit like a dash, that's our minus sign. The terminology, uh, subtraction of course related to addition concepts, the terminology used with subtraction is take away, minus, reduce, remove or find the difference. The algorithm can be written in a horizontal format or a vertical format. We usually encourage the vertical format because it's useful with place value, having the units under the units, the tens under the tens, the hundreds under the hundreds certainly makes life a lot easier. But it can be written two different ways. 6 minus 4 can be read as 6 take away 4 equals or is 2. The uh, number that we are subtracting is officially called the subtrahend. That's not important that students know these terms. Um, the, uh, nevertheless, the 4 in this case is the subtrahend, the 6 is the miduend, and of course the 2 is the difference. Students need to be very proficient with counting prior to any experiences in being able to do subtraction or any of the operations for that matter. We need to use models going from the concrete to the pictorial to the written and the abstract. We'll imagine that those blocks given there are actually ones that we can pick up and move, take three of them away from the five that we have and we have that five minus three is two. We can have pictures of five ladybirds and uh, remove cut out three of them, leaving two. We need to talk in language about this or write it down. We have five ladybirds but three got away, then we had two. Then the abstract format, we're doing this alongside of uh, the concrete and the pictorial and the written. Put them side by side so you can see that they all mean much the same thing. Five take away three is two. Early year students relate this symbol minus with the oral description of take away and the equal symbol with the word leaves. Five take away two leaves three. 
um, the uh, as well as our concrete and pictorial representations of course a number line is invaluable in being able to model subtraction there are other models we can use whole part part we've got 25 children as the whole lot part of these are 13 girls the other part is 12 boys 25 take away 13 leaves 12 we can count up the uh, number of boys in the diagram if we wish to difference by comparison how much larger or how much smaller Ben has seven ladybirds Jane has four well we're looking at um, how many more than the four have we got the answer is three a number line again is useful in using this model of difference by comparison that seven take away four leaves three or seven is three larger than four or four is three smaller than seven we can also look at the complement how many more need to be taken to make a quantity Jane had seven ladybirds four of them were male and the rest were females how many were females so how many do we need to add on to the four to get the seven this missing number is called the complement and to find out uh, the value of it we need to subtract four from seven Right, we count down to or back counting from six back to three we have to be careful a common strategy or a common uh, misconception here is that students will start with six and go six five four of course if they're counting back uh, taking one away from six gives you five for a start taking two away four taking three away you get three or we can count upwards and again we need to be careful that we don't have students saying three four five and giving five as the answer um, sorry giving um, three as the compliment oh, what would they do I'm getting myself confused here if they're counting up and go three four five six they're going to say that six take away three is four uh, where you need to count up from three one for a start to four two to five and three to six it's useful um, in the early days for students to use fingers and visual imagery to take away we want them to get away from reliance upon using their fingers to do maths however but for very young children um, it's quite acceptable they if they've got a good grasp of addition they should be able to use the known addition facts to rearrange that if 3 plus 4 is 7 then 7 minus 3 is 4 and 7 minus 4 is 3 should also be able to use doubles realizing that double 3 is 6 so if you take one of the threes away from 6 you get 3 all different strategies that students can use further thinking strategies for mental computation mental arithmetic is step to 10 move to the nearest 10 if we're trying to subtract 18 from 62 we could see that uh, 2 from 62 leaves 60 another 10 brings you 50 so we've taken away 12 so far we need to take away 18 altogether so there's another 6 to go and 6 take away from 50 leaves 44 we can jump in 10s taking say 57 away from 84 take away the 50 first that gives you 34 we've got seven more to take away well let's take away four to bring us to 30 and then another three four and three make seven gives us 27 all different strategies for doing things mentally and uh, current research shows that something like 85 percent of mathematical calculations occurring day to day throughout the country are done in your head you don't have time or the opportunity to use a calculator or write things down on paper we need mental strategies 
A third strategy is to jump further. We've taken 19 away from 68. Well, let's take 20 away for a start. It's a little bit easier. If I took away 20 from 68, I'd get 48, but I took away one too many. So I need to add one on, and the answer is 49. Step the difference. We could be counting the gap. And uh, so what have we got? 92 minus 78. Well, 78 and 2 make 80. Another 10 makes 90, so that's 12. And another 2 makes 92, so altogether 12 and 2, 14. 14 is the difference between 92 and 78. Some for you to try. Take uh, just as an example 52 subtract 28. We'd be able to work out the answer using each of the four strategies mentioned. Step to 10, jump 10s, jump further, step the difference. You may like to pause the video here while you try this and then uh, uh, restart the video to check your answers. Right, step to 10. We take 2 away from 52 to bring us to uh, an even number of 10s, which is 50. Let's take away the 20. That's 22 altogether. We're down to 30. We want need to take away 28, so there's another 6 to go, and the answer is 24. Jump to 10s. Well, we take the 20 away first. And 52 take away 20. We're jumping down 2 lots of 10s, brings us to 32. It's often useful to have your 1 to 100 chart up on the wall and of course uh, all you need to do is to go down vertically downwards on the number 1 to 100 chart from 52 to 42 to 32 that 52 less 20 is 32 when you're introducing this. Uh, let's take 2 away to get 30 and it's 22 we've subtracted. We need to take away 28, another 6. Well, 6 from 30 leaves 24. Students know Hopefully they're uh, rainbow facts that 6 and 4 make 10 and 6 being taken away from 30 should give us 24. Jump further. Well, let's take 30 away. It's close to 28. That gives you 22, but I took too, too many away. So add 2 on and the answer is 24. Step the difference, well, 28 and another 2 makes 30. Another 20 makes 50. Right, and another 2 makes 52. Right, I, I, the difference there was 2 and 20 are 22, and another 2 makes 24. The answer's the same, they're just a number of different strategies for working this out mentally. So whatever models are used, the desired components are that we use a variety of problem solving settings, a lot of word tasks, manipulative material, concrete aids to act out and model the process. We provide representations of objects in pictures, that's visualization, diagrams, uh, <coughs> the number line again is, is very useful, and drawings to move a step away from the concrete to the symbolic. And then finally we use abstract symbols to illustrate the process. Right. Let's try a few tasks here. First of all, nine buttons and you give three to, three to your friend. How many do you have left? Here are nine buttons. Let's actually bring them out for young students and have them move three out from the uh, others and they can see easily that there are six left. A family has two boys and seven girls. How many more girls and boys are there? Well, we can just uh, count up these extra ones. One, two, three, four, five. And we can see that seven take away two is five. Or there are five more girls than there are boys in this family. I have 11 chips and I eat seven. How many do I have left? 
Well, if we take 7 away, we can count that there are 4 left. And 7. Let's try to include open-ended tasks whenever we possibly can. Open-ended task when there's often more than one right answer encourages divergent thinking and should be part of the repertoire of any teacher of mathematics, the use of open-ended tasks. This room has three chairs more than the room next door. How many chairs might there be in each room? The Townsville Crocs is a second task, a leading cans tie pans by four points what might the scoreboard look like? And we can play the uh, game of snap with cards, but instead of uh, having the same card, you say snap when the numbers differ by a certain amount, say something like two. All good ways to engage students and still be practicing the maths that you want them to do. This room has three chairs more than the room next door. Well, there may be 30 here and 27 next door. There may be 20 here and 17 next door. There may be 15 here and 12 next door. We could get a different answer from every student in the class. The Townsville Crocs, well, they may have been 97. They're four more than the Taipans. The Taipans might have been 93. It may have been 64, 60, 99, 95, 50, 46. Again, we can get every student involved, not just uh, having the bright student up the back answering every question, but there's not just one right answer. There are multiple possible answers and each student in the class can come up with uh, their own individual solution. Play snap. Right. Well, normally in the normal game of snap, we would um, say snap now when there are two twos. But if we do it when there's a number difference, numbers differ by two, we would now say snap. We need to extend the, um, and apply subtraction ideas to uh, larger numbers. Think about 100 minus 68, 1246, take away 358. Is the answer more than 1000 or less than 1000? Well, in that second one, you're taking away 300 and something, and it was only 1200 and something. <coughs> so we want students to realise that the answer has to be less than 1000. Always we encourage them to uh, have an idea to estimate the answer, what might it be around about. And then of course we try to work it out exactly. Well 100 minus 68, we could use the strategy of uh, taking away 70. 68 is almost 70, that gives you 30. We had too, too many, so the correct answer is 32. We took away too, too many, so we'll add 2 on to compensate. OK, as we said, the answer should be less than 1,000. Um, again, we could round it. 1,250, that's four too many. 350, that's eight, less than what we should have had, but the answer's around about 900. Now we need to compensate that I had four too many, and I need to take away an extra eight. I only took away 350 instead of 358. So I need to take four and eight, 12 away from 900 which leaves 888. Again, estimate the answer. It's about 640, take away 380. The answer's around about 260. Now, around about, <coughs> we could be perhaps anywhere in the range 240 to 280. If the answer's less than 240, the answer we get 
is less than 240 or greater than 280, then we'll worry. Well, what are we doing? We could take 342 away for a start. That gives us an even 300. But we need to take away 376, which is another 34 extra. So we now take 34 away from 300, which leaves 266. Not the one and only way of doing this, but it's one possible way that students could think through the problem. Which of those three do you think would be the easiest to do in your head and which would be the hardest? Yes, well the first one's definitely easiest because there's no uh, carrying. second one's not too bad either. A little bit harder because you've got the larger number 9. Um, but there's no carrying to do. The hardest one is the third one because we're taking away a 3 from a 1. Always presents some problems. We can however do it by taking 121 away for a start, giving 270. And we need to take away 123, so 2 extra leaves an answer of 268. Right in your head, can you work out the easiest way to doing the following questions? 101 take away 21, 101 take away 29, and what's, what's the missing number? Each of those squares should be the same digit, or what one digit should go in uh, each of those squares to make that true? Well, the first one should be easy, shouldn't it? 21 from 101, the ones go. 20 from 100 leaves 80. So when we're working out uh, subtracting 29, we take away the 21 first. It gives you 80. And we've got another 8 to take away. leaves an answer of 72. Well, the 30 from the 50 left 20, so that um, digit to the right should have been a 2. And um, each of the squares represented the same digit so it must have been 52 take away 32 is 20. Right. Too often in maths classes students are just given a page of exercises to do and it's just boring not only for the better students but for some of the weaker students. Let's have them think problem solve, put a twist to it, make an open-ended task where there's possibly more than one answer, <coughs> have them involved in problem solving. Well let's actually look now at the algorithms that we teach. The main one that we've been teaching since about the 1970s is the decomposition method. Prior to the 1970s in Australian schools we used to teach the equals addition method and one that perhaps could be looked at more often is the complement method, the shopkeeper's method. So let's look at all three, realising that the preferred one for teaching in schools is the decomposition method because it can be modelled using MABs. Uh, the first one where there's no trading makes life a lot easier. Uh, 37 is 30 plus 7, 14 is 10 plus 4. You're taking the four units from the seven units and you leave three. And of course we can use blocks to do this if we, with younger children. And if we take 10 from 30, again uh, you can have your three um, longs from your MABs and take away one and you're left with 20. So we can see that 37 take away 14 leaves 23. Now with trading, we see that you can't take 8 from 7. So what we do is to change that 37 into 20 plus 17. And the 18 is 10 plus 8. Now we can take 8 from 17 and get 9 in the units. And we can take 110 from 2 tens and get 110. And the answer is 19. So this is very easy to model with concrete materials and it's why the decomposition method has replaced um, the uh, borrowing method in schools. The borrowing method, the way that used to be done in the 50s and 60s and even earlier, 
was to say 6 from 3 we can't do so we'll borrow a 10 6 from 13 leaves 7 and the 10 we borrowed we'll have to pay back so instead of taking 20 from 40 we've got to take 30 from 40 <coughs> this gives us the same answer as the decomposition method 43 take away 26 is 17 but it's a little bit harder to model with MAB so it's not actually a preferred method at the current time um, but of course if you've got people who went to school in the 50s and 60s and even later not uh, all teachers changed to the method they were supposed to use and uh, this borrowing method was still taught uh, even though the decomposition method was promoted the complement method is also called the shopkeeper's method. How much do we need to add to 22 to make up to 46? This is when you're giving change. Bought something for $22 and paid $46. Well, we say yeah, 8 onto 22 gives you 30. Another 10 gives you 40. And then we count out another $6. That's the way the shopkeepers do it. So the difference is 24. That's our complement method. Um, and it's not as commonly used in schools as it could be um, but it is a useful one that can be considered right again uh, you're welcome to pause the video while you try each of these methods to calculate 90 minus 36 when you're ready start the video up again well, how'd you go? Decomposition, you can't take 6 from 0, so you need to change that 90 into 80 plus 10. 36 is 30 plus 6. So we're taking 6 from 10 and leave 4, 30 from 80 and leave 50, and the answer is 54. The borrowing method gives the same answer, um, but here you borrow a 10 so that you've got something to take 6 away from and then instead of taking 30 from 90 you need to pay that 10 back is what we used to say you're taking 40 from 90 so we're really saying that 90 take away 36 is the same as 100 take away 46 you're adding 10 to each of the numbers the answer is still 54 uh, there's nothing wrong with this method and some people are stick by because it's the way they were taught um, but the decomposition method is preferred again as we said because it's easier to model using MABs when we start using concrete materials with students the shopkeepers method well 36 plus 4 gives us 40 another 50 gives you 90 so 4 and 50 the answer is 54 whichever meth method you use there's only one right answer there's more than one way to arrive at that answer. In teaching subtraction, the sequence that's used is first of all to look at single digits to 10 using concrete pictorial and word problems before we go to the abstract. So before you write down 8 minus 5 equals 3, let's bring out um, 8 ladybirds and have 5 fly away and count how many are left. Let's draw pictures and cross so many off and what, work out what's left. The aim is to develop thinking skills and strategies. It's not just rote learning, learning number facts, but we want students to be able to think and to use different strategies for problem solving. You then go into double digits up to 20 for a start with no trading. So taking 5 from 17, let's not look at 7 from 15 just yet. And then we move on to looking at trading. Uh, 15 minus 7 or 16 minus 9 or whatever. We then go uh, using two digit numbers up to 100 and fifthly move to 1000 and beyond with three or more digits. So it's usually the teaching sequence and the student has to master each step before going to the next one. And to finish off, let's always try to include some problem-solving activity to get students thinking. This is a, a popular one uh, where each letter represents a different digit and we're asked to find those digits which make the calculation true. 
Well, we need to do it step by step. And uh, of course, the first thing is that we notice is that that M has to be 1. You can't add two single digit numbers and get 20 or 30 or 40. It has to be in the teens, so we've got a 1. What do you think might be next? Well, we're adding 1 onto something, and we've got a, a number greater than 10, so it's a fair guess that that uh, S might perhaps be 9. Now, there's a little bit of trial and error here. Perhaps there was one carried over from the previous one, and that was an 8. <coughs> well, this won't work out if, um, uh, if I was wrong with that 9 guess, but the, it should be either 8 or 9. 9 seems likely, so let's press ahead with it. If we can't come to a solution, we'll come back to it and try 8. What next? Oh. Zero? Again, seems reasonable. If it's not right, we'll come back and think later. Right, we had three uh, letters all the same. I'm going to try five. So that means if you had 0 and 5 and you got a different number, there must have been one carried over. So that n must have been 6. Now, 6 and something gave you 15. It could have been a 9, but then there'd be no carryover. It could have been an 8 if there was a carryover. So again, I'll try 8. Um, and we have a solution. You might like to play with that to see if there are other possible solutions, but we have one solution here which works. That concludes our short presentation on subtraction. Um, many of the ideas included here are not uh, my original ideas, but come from uh, the book Teaching Primary Mathematics by Booker uh, and from topic notes from uh, Steve Tobias from 2008. Thank you.